Welcome everybody, my name is Tim Sandy and I'm a Technical Partner Manager and Systems Engineer for VMware. In this session, I'm going to talk about what's new in Virtual SAN 6.5. As you may know, we announced at VMworld Barcelona 2016 last week our new vSphere 6.5 version. And because Virtual SAN is a part of vSphere, obviously Virtual SAN is now also version 6.5. So I'm going to go over a sales overview and talk about some items such as the total cost of ownership of savings that it can provide, how we accelerate responsiveness to the business and IT with Virtual SAN, as well as accelerating the adoption of hyperconverged infrastructure and next-gen hardware. So let's get started. Some of the key customer challenges we see are their business... Some of the key customer challenges we see are their business being responsive to the unpredictable business demands, then trying to address their IT demands with the limited skill sets and the associated budgets, and finally the traditional IT model with separate silos is no longer a practical way to run an IT department anymore. And this is something that we see quite frequently. So when talking to your customers about virtual SAN, one thing to mention is that Virtual SAN has been very rapidly being adopted thanks to all of our efforts. We have surpassed over 5,000 production customers, have sold into 40% of the Fortune 1000 companies, so take note that these big enterprises are interested in fueling a major part of the growth here. And we have seen over 200% growth for three consecutive quarters now with Virtual SAN sales. But given vSphere install base of 500,000 customers, we still have a huge opportunity in front of us for vSAN. Now with Virtual SAN 6.5, we offer additional total cost of ownership or TCO savings by offering new workload types such as cloud native apps and the ability for physical workloads to point to the vSAN data store via iSCSI communication. Support of all flash hardware in the Virtual SAN standard edition while eliminating the cost of networking hardware for two-node robo-deployments or remote office branch office deployments. Then we can accelerate responsiveness of the business by providing a full-featured Power CLI tool to fully automate daily operational tasks. And then separating the witness and virtual SAN traffic for stretched clusters. We've accelerated the adoption of Hyperconverged infrastructure, HCI, with the support of next gen hardware. We've done this by increasing the cache sizing limits, as well as now support larger capacity drives through the 512E drives. So let's jump into some of the new features of Virtual SAN 6.5. Earlier this year in vSAN 6.2, we introduced some major capabilities that included inline deduplication, compression, and erasure coding with quality of service. With vSAN 6.5, we'll be able to expand the opportunities we can target by supporting a broader set of workloads and applications. One of the, app one of the, one of the capabilities frequently requested by customers is the ability to leverage the storage provided by a vSAN cluster to run physical, for example, non-virtualized workloads. In addition, many of these customers want to run high availability cluster applications like Microsoft SQL Server with Windows Server Failover Clustering. With vSAN 6.5, we're now able to address these use cases through our support for iSCSI protocol and communication. Customers will be able to expose the Virtual SAN data store to physical workloads, clustered applications, and potentially even workloads running on third-party hypervisors. So this could give us the ability to address multi-hypervisor requirements. The next key feature of Virtual SAN is targeted at a popular, popular use case, remote office or branch office or robo environments. Many of our customers would like to be able many of our customers would like to be able to minimize their upfront costs of deploying Virtual SAN in the remote sites. We took a first step here with Virtual SAN 6.1 where we added support for two node clusters. To further bring down the cost of robo deployments, we're now adding the ability to directly connect to two vSphere servers together using simple crossover cables. What this means is customers no longer need to purchase, install, or maintain routers and switch between their two nodes. Next on the management front, we're releasing a full featured set of vSAN PowerCLI commandlets 
which help enable full automation of the storage stack. And then finally, we continue to focus on optimizing vSAN for all flash configurations and supporting the latest flash technologies. With vSAN 6.5, we pick up the support for larger capacity SSDs with the 512e drive support. So a goal of vSAN is to be the best platform for flash storage and to help customers accelerate their adoption of flash. To that end, we're cascading the all-flash hardware support down to vSAN Standard Edition, which means all versions of vSAN can now fully support all-flash hardware configurations at no extra charge. Note, however, that the all-flash space efficiency features such as dedupe, compression, and erasure coding will remain in vSAN Advanced and Enterprise Editions only, allowing us to differentiate those editions with valuable software features. Even though all flash will be supported in standard, for any sizable all flash configuration, customers should go with the vSAN Advanced or Enterprise. So that completes this session for today. I hope the information that I presented to you was valuable. And I invite you to come back to uh, Tech Day's YouTube page, and you'll see the link here be next to me. And please come back, and you'll find that there's other enablement sessions just like this for both sales and technical, and both by myself as well as others. So please come back and check out Tech Data's YouTube page for more good VMware enablement sessions on various different products from VMware. So again, thank you very much, and I look forward to you coming and watching more of our enablement sessions. Thank you.